spend. Say you forget something for cooking and you want to buy a, a grill. They have a grill for like under 10 bucks. You know, you pick it up, you're at the campsite, they have it at the general store. Uh, they have a lot of stuff. I actually buy their fire starters a lot. I buy their power cord a lot and what else? Storm matches. Random stuff like that I buy from them. So there's definitely a place for this kind of stuff. And I originally wanted to make this video with only this survival kit in a can. But I've mentioned before, I'm no survivalist, I'm no bushcrafter. This would make for the, one of the most boring videos. I would probably start a fire and then sleep on the ground and that would be it. So I got a bunch of other gear. I did bring two items that are not Coglins. I apologize for that and I'll explain why. Depending where you find this kit, sometimes it says it comes with bubble gum, sometimes it doesn't. Like one little strip of bubble gum and that might seem negligible, but I was really looking forward to fishing with that. Apparently bubble gum makes, and specifically bubble gum flavor bubble gum, makes for decent fishing lure. So I picked up this on the way. It's the only pack of bubblegum I could find that was bubblegum flavor. So we'll be using this. I might rig up something as a fishing line and test our luck. You know you know me so far, I haven't caught a single fish on camera. So I think it'd be really funny if I catch something with this. Test that out later and let me show you the rest of the stuff. Now, since I don't have a thermos cell with me, I have some citronella candles and some mosquito coils. Hopefully the mosquitoes aren't too bad. So far they're okay, but I've been fooled before. So we are at a campground, there is water available, but I thought it'd be interesting to gather water in this, filter it with this funnel, there's a little screen in there, and then purify it with these drinking tablets. I purposely did not bring a water filter. They do have one, but I purposely brought these because I do want to practice using them. Let's talk fire starters now. So I actually use these regularly. They're storm matches. They're great in winter when it's wet outside, but I'm gonna try other things today. Here we have these are just your typical fire starting sticks. They're probably more common in cube form, but they have these as well. Obviously some matches. I think this is three bucks. So a bunch of packs of matches. This is more of a backup. I won't use this unless I really have to. I think it'll be more interesting using the other stuff. So put that on the side. Here we have some fire discs. I've never used this before. It's just like a starting fire starting material. And I kind of went overboard. I bought one and then thought, you know, it'd be nice to have two. I bought a second one. I forgot that I bought the first one and I ended up saying, hey, you know what, let's go for a third. So got out of hand very quickly, but we will use them all. Don't worry about that. Here we have some fire paste. Now I've never used this. It's like a gel and it lights. So I think this paired with this will make for an interesting fire starting experience. And you guys have seen these before. These are magnesium rod. I need to redeem myself for my dollar store video. I did not use this properly and I plan to today. So. Let's look forward to that. So here are some can openers. These are like little army can openers. They work surprisingly well. I'll show you guys that later. We have some skewers. I brought some tomatoes and some vegetables to throw on a skewer. Always useful. Here we have some utensils. This will actually be handy. A few of these things I am going to give away, but stuff like this I'm actually going to keep. You can never go wrong with an extra pair of utensils. We have a cup. I'm starting to get a nice collection of titanium stainless aluminum cups so this one's a 600 milliliter decent size for a coffee a soup a meal there we go i can boil coffee in that speaking of boiling coffee i'll be using this as my stove you see it has those little alcohol tabs in there you can use any other kind of starter in there you can actually use one of these discs put in there you can put these sticks in there as well so we'll be using this for at least one or two meals maybe a coffee as well here is a pot gripper. Now you might be questioning why do I have this if I don't have a pot. I might be using it to move around the grill if I need. So I will be making a steak on this later tonight and maybe some corn. And the last thing for dinner or for cooking ware, cookware I should say, is this cast iron broiler. Now I did bring a piece of salmon to try to cook in this. However, I'm realizing how small it is now. We'll see but we'll definitely make something in this. And now for the shelter. I have to explain that a little bit because I put this video off way too long. I've been thinking about doing this video for about two, three months now, and I never got around to it because Coggins doesn't do tents. They don't do sleeping pads. They don't do sleeping bags. They don't do sleeping setups. So I did not know how I could do that. And then I found out that they actually do hammocks. So I, I do apologize. Hammocks aren't the most interesting shelter setup. I know that I'll make up for it in winter. Don't worry. So, Got myself a hammock and then I said, you know, it's going to be pretty cold when I start, when I do this video. So I went with a thermal blanket. Look how happy that guy is. Look how happy he is. 
So it's like a reflective tarp. And I said, you know what, I'll put that under the hammock and I'll wrap it over me kind of as a makeshift sleeping bag. And then by the time I actually got all the gear, it got like even colder. So tonight's probably going to be down to almost single digit Celsius, uh, maybe 10 Celsius. And I think it's around 50, low 50s Fahrenheit. I'll write on the screen. And I'm not comfortable sleeping in just that in a tarp. So I picked this up as well. I hate these things. It's a Marlar blanket that's like tied up to be a sleeping bag. I hate them because they're so noisy, but they work. So I got this and I plan on throwing one or two packs of these hot hands inside and I'm kind of interested to see how warm that gets. So that is the sleep setup. It's not supposed to rain. However, if it does, I have some power cord and some stakes. These are, if I need, I will throw that tarp over me, but they're not calling for any rain as of now. So I won't be setting that up. And the last thing, the last thing is the most important thing, arguably. This is a dunk bag. Now I am going to try to use this to keep my beer cold. I'm going to tie some power cord to it, toss it in the water over there. Hopefully it keeps the beer cold. It, it does work depending on the temperature of your water, so that's it. That's all for the gear, guys. I have a few meals to make. I'm gonna set up camps and make some fire. And like I said, hopefully it makes for an interesting video. And Thanks for watching. Now, I plan on setting up my hammock between maybe not those two trees because it's a straight fall into the water, but maybe that tree and that tree. And I did say there were two items I brought that were not Coglins. So obviously this is from Coglins here. I do not know how the hammock ties to the tree. And when I looked at the material, it's just this rope material. And that's not great. It's really thin and it actually damages the trees. In fact, a lot of campgrounds don't like hammocks for that reason. So I brought my own. I do not plan on using the hammock. What I might do is take the straps. You see they're wider, they're made wider so they don't damage trees. If I find that this one is not suitable, I will be using these straps. This filter, I have no idea what it's for. It's a funnel, but there's also a little filter in there. It looks too big to be for coffee, and I really don't know what it's for. So my plan is to put it on the opening of the bottle, fill this with water, and hopefully that keeps out any big debris like leaves, branches, little critters, whatever. Whatever it keeps out, I will greatly appreciate. I don't know if you guys could tell by that angle, but the filter actually worked. Because all the waves coming in, there was a lot of debris in the water, and I'm actually really surprised that this helped. Now I got about a liter. You can see it's not perfect. There's a few ignore the dirt from the ground, but there's a few little things floating in there. So, now I'll add these little tabs. This is two tablets per one liter of water. Little, little tablets. There we go, put on the valve. no one's watching me at the campground because like there's running water right right behind me so by the way I'm like the only person here it's late September it's cold no one's really camping and it's not even like a weekend right now so I see one car driving right now I saw one more trailer down there and this is perfect so I'm gonna sit 30 minutes and we'll get on our first beer so I did bring two beers today, and you know when I bring two beers, usually it's because there's something. And in this case, I hit 2,000 subs, so thank you very much for everyone who sub, commented, liked, and all that stuff, you know, it really helps. I know everyone says that, but having started a channel, I actually see how it helps, so thank you very much. And I will start with the, they're both IPAs, by the way, and I'm not a big fan of IPAs, but these orange cream skull ones are really good. I think I'll go with the sour. This is a sour IPA. And these guys, this is Luke's Brewery in Doval, Montreal. They are, they're probably like five minutes from the airport by foot, honestly, like they're really close. So if you have a big layover and you're, you're thirsty for a beer, see if they're open. And they just hit their five year anniversary actually. So cheers to them and cheers to you guys. Now I'm not a big fan of 
IPAs in general. I'm not a big fan of sour beers, so this is a double whammy right there. I never talk bad about a beer. I like to just give my opinion. So like I said, I don't like sour beers because of the sour taste. Like they're not bad, they're just not my style of beers. And then IPA has like a hoppy after finish. So this is a mix of both of that. So if you're into that, go for it. making salmon I got the smallest piece I could find because I'm hoping it fits in this it should it should I thought this was fully closed by the way when I first bought it luckily I did bring aluminum foil so I'll throw some salmon in there throw some butter I got some salmon rub from Trader Joe's for those who don't know we don't have Trader Joe's in Canada do we not that I know of at least not in Quebec not in Ontario so I crossed over to Vermont brought some of this back and we have some rice and hydrate some rice. I was hoping to put the rice with the salmon and cook them at the same time, but I really doubt that I'm fitting all of that in here. So maybe I'll cook it in the cup actually. That's what we're gonna do. By the way, the water sort of like changed colors with those tablets. I don't know if it reacted with the plastic or something, but I'm not thrilled about this. We'll try it out. If it's my last video, you know why. It will be a little heavy on the tomatoes. I don't plan on bringing half a can of tomatoes back home, so dumping the whole thing, we're gonna eat the whole thing. Salmon is actually really good considering I had no idea how long to cook it. That's the beauty of aluminum foil, you kind of just let it go. The rice is a bit wet. I made the mistake of putting water in and then the tomatoes I put in, I should take out another water too. Honestly though, it's better than most of the meals I've had. I 
I am already regretting not bringing a knife. That's been an issue opening all the packages and everything basically. I did mention earlier that they have a few axes, like those little 12 inch uh, camp axes and a few hand saws, but they don't really have any knives. They have the kitchen knife like this one, which I mean is fine for most little meals. They had a multi-tool, which in my opinion, any cheap multi-tool isn't really worth getting, so I didn't get it. They do have a fold-out blade that I saw online, but again, a lot of this stuff is like online, but discontinued or not available. And the only other option between a folding blade and that is a 18 inch machete, which I thought of it was a bit overkill. But yeah, I do regret not getting a knife. That was definitely one of the better meals I've had. So now time to set up the hammock. It is a little bit windy to be setting it up by the water, but I think that's gonna give me the nicest view in the morning. So that's what we're gonna do. It's actually not gonna work. The straps they provide aren't even long enough to go around the tree. So I have no choice to take the other ones. Now before someone says why don't you use the power cord that I brought, I could use this, I have in the past and it does hold my weight, but the width of this cord will dig into the tree and it actually damages the tree. So if I had nothing else I would use this because I have other options today I'll be using those straps. If I'm already touching the ground, that means I can't fall, right? So I don't know how much I trust this hammock. What I'm gonna do is actually tie off one of the points a bit higher. And I should be at least, honestly, as long as I'm not touching the ground, I'm okay with that. But it's incredible how much stretch there is in the whole thing. Alright, fourth time is the charm. Let me get in here. Honestly, once you're in, it's, it's not that bad. Proof that I'm not lying on the floor. I'm I never said this was going to be a comfortable night's sleep. By the way, those who don't know, um, it's really, not really awkward, but it can be awkward getting into a sleeping bag and a hammock. So now the fact that I have to get to a Mylar blanket and this thing, I'm lucky it's a day where the campground is not busy because I look absolutely ridiculous doing this. But if all goes well, this will actually keep me warm from the wind underneath. I don't have an underquilt. Cogsons does not make underquilts. So hopefully this keeps me warm. And then I have the emergency bag, but I won't put that yet because if not, the wind is going to blow it away. All right, I think it's time to go over this little survival kit. Now, like I said, unless you're some really good survivalist, I would get nothing done with this, honestly. I would, like I said, I would get a fire started, but otherwise, not much would be done. First thing, there is about a foot of duct tape. There is a Ziploc bag. Oh, this is to actually put everything back into so everything's waterproof. Let's see. Whistle. I'm in an actual campground, so I have absolutely no use for that. Pack of matches. Old school pack of matches. Always useful. A little pencil. You have some, some cord. It's like sewing. Actually, yeah, the sewing needle in here. So it's for sewing. There is one of these little candles. I'm trying to 
trying to get the needle out. I said before I have, I have fat fingers. So there you go, needle, pretty thick needle actually. Tiny bit of cordage, I don't know what you would get done with this. Like I said, people who know what they're doing probably get get by better with these things, but these little fire starter cubes, really small pieces cut out. Have a safety pin. Safety pin, bobby pin, what are these called? Safety pin. There are, there's another one, a bit smaller. We have a compass, smallest compass I've ever seen. What else? Two nails. Now, I'll get into this after. I was planning on using more stuff in this kit and the days just gone by so fast that I just never got around to it. There are a couple fishing hooks in here, which I do want to use. There's a razor blade. Four waterproof matches. Again, some cordage and a twist tie. Forgot, forgot what those are called. We have some wire. We have just a piece of paper. I guess they say it's a, I think they said it was a notepad. It goes with a pencil. Some more twist ties, green ones this time. Actually, the other one was green as well. And, no, and there's something else. I think this is the mirror. They say there's a mirror in here. I thought it was it was like a sticker. Because it's like a signaling mirror. There's that. And there's the outdoor survival tips. Simple shades shelter. So it shows you how to build a shelter as well. But they don't really give you much to make the shelter with besides that piece of cord. That's why I said I feel it's a bit gimmicky unless you really have a lot of resources. Like if, if I brought this out, it would end up just being a bushcraft video where I just break branches and build a lean-to and then start a fire with this stuff otherwise I do not know enough to make, get this get any use out of this and then the tin so I forgot one thing in this kit and it's this right here this little multi-tool and I feel really stupid because there is a knife on this side here which is why I didn't buy any other knife because I knew I had this and it completely skipped my mind today. So there's a knife, there's a screwdriver, bottle opener, can opener, saw blade, lanyard, butterfly wrench, that slot there, uh, wrench, wrench, sundial which I have no idea how to use and hopefully I'm not forgetting anything but yeah I if you see by this kit, I mean, I would use this maybe to make some kindling. Oh, and also, this sewing thread is also sewing thread slash fishing line. So, I'm going to try to rig something up right now. And there's a dock over there. I might, might test it out. Now, I had plans to make like a really rough fishing rod with a branch using the nails from that kit and taking something like this, this lid, putting a nail through, putting a nail through here, using it as like a little reel. Um, I'm going to ditch that plan because I have this. This is the half of that griddle. And there's little notches into the wood and even this piece here. So I'm gonna wrap some fishing rod around here and use that. I'm gonna set it up, but I will be fishing later at night. If anyone knows if this actually works, let me know. I don't have high hopes for fishing, but if anyone has actually tried it before or knows better than me, please let me know. Probably supposed to chew it just a little bit.
So, I don't know if you can hear that. The only complaints on Google for this campground was that the train passes really often and it's really loud. I mean, I hear it doesn't bother me too much, but if it happens all night, it might be a little issue. There's a few other people on that side, and there's a spot I wanted there, but I didn't want to be the only person blocking their view from the water. So I'm going to go for a walk there and check out the dock. That's why I go fish after. If there's fish anywhere, it might be there. I feel like it's too rough right here by the rocks. So we'll take a look. We'll do that and then come back, start a fire, make our second meal, then go fish. And we got to get the beer out of the water first, actually, before it gets too dark. The only one off limit was this one, which I don't really know why. First thing that comes to mind is they probably don't want people setting up their tent here. Water level probably come up high enough to uh, to get you up there. So otherwise, feel solid. I'm sure it's don't. Now here at the dock, I originally wanted these spots on the right, or one of these spots, and I didn't take it because I said there's no way that this dock isn't going to be packed. It's one of the last nice days of summer. It's a nice day out. There's going to be crowds of people here, so I did not take this spot. Knowing how calm it would have been, I would have. But let's see. Let's see if we can actually get a fish here later. I swear I was gone for like 20 minutes and it's already gotten dark. So we'll get back to camp, we'll try out those fire starters we got and cook up some dinner. And get the beer out of the water. I should have done that before it got dark, but we'll do that first. Forget it. We'll try the try the citronella one. There's no mosquitoes, but at least we'll have some light on the table. The matches are also terrible. They light really easy, but then they go right out, even though there's there's like no wind right now. By the way, my fire pit's right there, that's why I'm throwing them that way. Don't think I'm just throwing matches all over the campyard, campground. And I'll 
pick up the ones I missed in the morning. It's crazy, they light up so well and they just go out. I'm just hoping that it like melts a bit and catches the wick. I had really high hopes in that. All right, no candle tonight. We'll get the fire started over there. First, you saw us light up earlier. It actually works really well, but we're gonna accelerate it a little bit. Paused and then a train started passing again. I do see what they mean by the trains. There must be one every 15 20 minutes, and it seems like this one's been driving by for the past 10 minutes. And, anyways, we'll have to live with it. Another fact about them is they are actually my local brewery of choice. Uh, they're family owned, they're really nice, they make good beer. So, cheers to them. And they did not ask me to do this. Uh, I willingly buy their beers, I have no problem with that. Cheers. It's a little on the warm side. Like I was saying with the other beer is I'm not a big fan of IPAs because of the hoppy aftertaste. However, this one starts with like a nice citrusy sweet taste and finishes with that. So it's kind of a nice blend. I'm not against trying any IPA. It's just not my beer of choice. And this one's an orange cream skull IPA. I've tried mango cream skull IPA and they're all good from all the brands I've tried. I mean, I'm not gonna say they're all good everywhere, but try, give them a try. Honestly, they're, they're pretty good. use the box from the hammock as a plate. I have no problem eating directly on the table, but kind of think of the next person, so we'll do it this way. I was gonna make skewers, but I think I'll make the steak some corn and call it a day. So I'm gonna use them to actually try to handle and flip the meat. 3rd camper here. No, there's actually a few down by the dock but I think I've waved to one person since I'm here. I'm not saying I'm rude, I'm just saying like no one's walked by. to judge from that grill there. It's a little bit too high, but we'll throw it back on another five minutes. So ideally you do not want the corn to catch fire. I stoked the fire a little too much. We'll get the fire under control and throw them back on in a bit. Do not do this at home guys. There we go, where can you put this one? There we go. Gonna give this a few minutes while the 
corn simmers over there. Meanwhile, I'm gonna have some water. I was trying to make a point to say like stay hydrated. I know I drink a lot of beer on my channel, but water is more much more important. So cheers. And for the record, I do not recommend that Coglin's water reservoir. Not only does it taste like plastic, I'm sure it goes away after a few times, but there's so many better better options. Like get a reusable water bottle, get a reusable gallon jug or something that there's no need for that in my opinion. It, it's like a plastic bottle that's just waiting to leak in my opinion. So no offense to them, just do not recommend that one. The cup, the cup however, kind of like. I don't know if I talked about it in my last video, but that's my favorite way to make corn. You just throw it on the grill or throw it ideally like three, four inches above the coals and you just char the entire husk. The inside will steam and some of the easiest corn. It makes really good corn too. I'll try it out if you guys haven't already. In the meanwhile, it should be done. It's half on fire right now, but I'm enjoying this. Okay, no, no, now it's actually, now it's actually on fire. Now for the corn, like, it looks completely burnt, right? And it might be. There you go. It's the worst angle I'll show you guys, but yeah. It steams it inside, it, you might get a little charring, which I think adds a little flavor, but might not be people's preferred way of eating it, but honestly. And in my opinion, it's just as sweet as if you boiled it. Don't get any butter or anything. Um, because I'm in a campground, there are raccoons. They're really smart. They know there's food here. They know people leave food out. So I'm going to pack away all my garbage, throw it out. I'm going to clean up my utensils before I, you know, set everything up for the night. They're not a threat or anything, but because I am sleeping outside, I kind of don't want them running around me, if that's the case. So, I'm gonna get on that now. I will let the fire go out before I go fish. I don't like to leave a fire unattended, unless there's like four feet of snow around me, so. I fully didn't expect that to work, but can anyone confirm if that's real or not, the whole bubble gum as fishing lure thing? Also, I'm quickly understanding with that train why all the seasonal campers are in the furthest spots on that side. You hear the train much less over there. So, time for bed. Now, it's not that cold yet, but I'm gonna throw one of these in there. I'm gonna keep it sealed, but it's gonna be on standby for if I need it. Throw it in my pocket right now. Nothing's worse than waking up cold in a hammock. Your your whole body's just cold. I did it last time when I was camping. I fell asleep in my t-shirt with no underquilt, nothing. I had my sleeping bag on top of me, and my back was just frozen. So I got up, threw on a sweater and everything. I did that before. I'm not making that mistake again. It doesn't seem like it's getting that cold, so I don't think this will be as bad of a night that I thought. But still, not looking forward to sleeping in this thing. It really is just a mylar sheet. Like, 
taped together. Hopefully it's taped well. And there's one opening on one side. The foot area is closed. It's actually bigger than I expected. I don't think it's going to be that bad. I might save this for a winter video. Hardest part is me crawling in this in the hammock. That's even a regular sleeping bag is not ideal. That red tarp I had earlier, I put it underneath me. It's not big enough to do both underneath and on top, so I decided underneath as an underquilt. And so far it's a little windy and I can say it's doing its job. As for the Mylar sleeping bag, sleeping bag, it's by no means quiet, but I have to say it's actually keeping my body temperature. So I do have that hot pack in case, and I might actually open it sooner than later and throw it by my feet. But honestly, I'm kind of surprised how comfortable this is. Like besides this being loud, it's kind of comfortable. So thanks for watching up till now, guys. I will see you in the morning. I'll probably make some coffee in the morning. Nothing too, too complicated probably make some coffee and pack up so see you guys then good morning so that was surprisingly not a bad sleep considering how I'm set up I expected to be much worse it really wasn't that bad it didn't get down nearly as cold as I thought and I had a few cold spots around my shoulders because I'm not really covered up there but otherwise it really wasn't that bad the train, however, was really noisy. It seems like it never stops driving by and it honks every 20 minutes. So it was a long night. Um, I'm gonna get out of here before anyone sees me. Not out of the park, but out of this hammock because I look absolutely ridiculous. So let me get out of here, I'll make some coffee. I don't know what's louder, that train or this sleeping bag. I did use the rest of my water last night to take out the fire. I don't like to leave a fire burning when I sleep. And yeah, but I'm not bothering to purify more this morning. I'm just gonna get some from the tab over there, wherever it is. Today's coffee, we have some instant coffee from Trader Joe's again. I may have added a little too much water. That's all right. I'm gonna enjoy my coffee while I clean up camp. Thanks for clicking and watching the video and I will see you in the next one.